Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit has given you power and authority over every darkness and every pain in your life? Do you believe that God can heal you and restore your soul with a simple prayer of faith? My name is Andres Martinez and I want to tell you a little bit more about my story. I was born and raised in Mexico City um, by a dad that was Baptist, conservative, traditional, uh, my mom a dentist and you know growing up we didn't really have much um, but we had the Lord. We had uh, family, we had a lot of Bible studies and a lot of different things but to be honest with you I didn't quite understand what being a Christian meant back then. Um, when I was 12 I actually um, got baptized by my dad in a river and it was a wonderful experience but again to be honest with you growing up I was just a rebellious teen. <laughs> I was you know going to a lot of parties, drinking with my friends, um, going to church still but honestly I didn't pay attention to to, to, to to the preachings and you know I tried to join the worship team and you know I was just living a double life. Uh, but something crazy happened when I was 19. Um, you know, keep in mind throughout all this time, I didn't really understand fully. Like I believed in God. You know, maybe maybe just like you, you believed in God. You have, uh, you know, uh, uh, an idea of, of what it looks like. Kind of, you know, back then or as you've been growing up, but you don't quite understand what it really means. You know, a lot of people just think it's about when you die, and it really starts now. Again, I didn't understand all of this, and so I, I lived my own way. And when I was 19, something bad happened, something really scary happened to me. I went with a buddy of mine to Puerto Escondido, which is a place in Mexico, and we wanted to surf, wanted to party, wanted to, you know, just do a bunch of stuff out there to just, uh, you know, feel like we're in control of our lives and feel that we're on top of the world of some sort. So we decided we wanted to do surfing. Um, learn surfing and to you know we had this idea in our minds right of uh, you know surfing these huge waves and whatnot but uh, crazy thing one of those days we went into the ocean um, and the ocean was wild like huge waves and you know what I was I was feeling private I was feeling too confident too confident is the word and I went into the ocean and a huge wave came in broke my leash and it like toss my board like far far away from me I'm like in the middle of the ocean I'm getting like tossed by by by, by waves and one after the other one starts swallowing water I start getting wiped out like I could feel like you know hitting <laughs> with my head the bottom of the ocean as these waves are just crushing my my, my body and and I started getting very desperate I started feeling a lot of fear a lot of you know, just like this is it, this is it, and you know how they say uh, your your light flashed uh, in front of your eyes. That's literally what happened because I really thought that was it. A final wave came in and it really put me under like 15 feet of water. I remember looking up and the only thing I could think of because I really thought that was my last breath. I I really thought I am not coming out of this one because my air reserve was done. And so I prayed. I prayed, I think one of the first times, like a very authentic prayer that said just, Lord, in your hands, I commit my spirit. And I promise you, as soon as I said that, the ocean just spit me back out. Kind of like Jonah, <laughs> just spit me back out. I was able to finally catch my breath. And I remember just falling, collapsing at the shore, like out of the ocean. Just, I just lied there and I said, God, you saved my life. Growing up, I honestly didn't know what my purpose was, why I was here on earth to do, why I even wanted to do anything in my life. I just thought I, I wanted to just have a good time and just enjoy life. And so after that moment, I really knew that I had a purpose, that I was meant to do something greater in this world. Otherwise, I would have drowned. And so, yeah, that's kind of how my story begins. That actually became the catalyst for me wanting to move to Canada. I live now in Toronto, Canada, but let me take you back to how it all kind of started. 
<laughs> on the plane. This literally was like four months after this experience uh, of drowning in the ocean and whatnot. I actually ended up um, talking with my dad and I said, Dad, I really want to study uh, and, and go to Canada. Um, I wanted to go into digital media arts and video and all these different things. And so I thought, man, maybe, maybe my life will be better over there. And so I actually went into a plane um, uh, and I got really scared in the plane. I, I, it kind of hit me, you know, like sometimes it doesn't hit you at first, but it really hit me when I was in that plane, especially with the turbulence. I was like, oh my gosh, here comes the near death experience again. But something amazing happened in that plane. Once again, I said this prayer. I said a, a prayer that was very sincere. One of the most sincere ones. <laughs> along with the other one, I said, God, if you really exist, if you're really there, I ask that you please guide me and that you please be with me and open doors because I don't know anyone. I am broke. I do not come from a family of money. I don't, I'm not coming with a lot of money in Canada. I think I had like 50 bucks in my pocket, to be honest. Uh, 50 pesos, I think, and even dollars. <laughs> and I was scared, but God never fails. He came through and started opening doors. I was hosted by an amazing family that just opened the doors of their home to me. And it was honestly really awesome to see God's hand through all of this. And actually, you know, one of my first experiences like in this spiritual world and kind of like really understand that all of this is real was when I um, had a Bible study, uh, well a buddy of mine, uh, the, the guy I was living with actually, we ended up having a Bible study in his basement and craziest thing happened. I've never seen any of this, I've only seen this stuff in movies, but the girl that I was sitting with, um, you know, in, 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 in this uh, uh, couch that we were all kind of sitting on, um, I knew something was off, she started like behaving so weird and next thing we know we were like praying for her and she started laughing, she started manifesting a demon was in her. Yes, like I know this might sound crazy to you, you've never seen it, but I never seen it either and when I saw that, you know, it really blew my mind because the voice changed, her voice became guttural like this and, and I'm talking about a, a, a girl that's like, you know, very delicate, very thin, very, you know, gracious in her speech and all of a sudden there's something in her that has to be taken over. She started looking at every single one of us saying, you're scared, you are no one and, and, and that's when we knew this is a evil spirit. We actually ended up praying for her and we we grabbed her and, 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 and so my boys, they were, they were big guys. They couldn't even contain her because she had supernatural strength. One of the scariest things that I've seen. But here is where it gets awesome in this story. I felt this huge heat almost behind us. This, this, this huge army behind us that I knew was from God. I knew there were angels with us that were saying, we are stronger. We are more mighty than the one that is in her. And so we started praying and in the name of Jesus, we rebuked that demon to be removed from her. She ended up vomiting and she ended up like, you know, accepting Christ after the end of all this. But it was very scary. This happened in like hours, hours of intercession, hours of this exorcism, you might call it. And I... That really confirmed that, man, the spiritual world is real. But at the time, I honestly didn't know. I didn't know about the keys of the kingdom, power and authority. I didn't know about the spiritual world. I didn't know that the spiritual gifts of 1 Corinthians 12 were real. A lot of this stuff, I, I, I you know, growing up, I, I didn't really had much, much interest in me, like, digging it from, you know, from my own. So I thought all those things were just, you know, cool stories and maybe maybe it happened back then with the disciples and miracles and all these different things but stay tuned I'm about to tell you something that's gonna blow you away so let's fast forward now to 2015 where I got married I, I found the girl of my dreams met her in a salsa festival you can probably see up here <laughs> that's a picture um, of her and it was the most blessing um, that I experienced in Canada when I finally found the girl of my dreams and we started building a life together but things were not as easy as I thought and so we actually wanted to start a business and we and we went all in she quit her job I quit my job 
but things started not going so well. We started our first venture, our second venture, started going more in debt. We, we started going down and insecurity crept in. We started fighting with each other. Things got worse and worse and worse. And so finally, I, it hit me. I have anxiety. I had depression. I had stress. I had fear. I was really scared for my life. I honestly did not know what was going to happen to me. My faith grew weaker. I forgot about all those stories and, and, and how God had delivered me. You know, coming to Canada and the ocean, in my mind, all I could think of was, I am screwed. I am a failure. God is not with me right now. And, and that really discouraged me, that really put me in a bad place. And I started searching, I went out there, started learning about the law of attraction and new age and, and spirituality and meditation, all these different things. And my soul and my spirit did not find rest in the world. This information that I got, like, I didn't even know how to filter it. It actually got me more overwhelmed. I did not know what I was supposed to do. In my desperation, in, in all of this stuff, because I tried to read the Bible, it wasn't working. I, I, I didn't know. I was just desperate. I did not want to get out of bed. I, my mind felt so clear, and I thought, God, when will this go away? Please, are you there? And I could just not hear his voice. One night, I remember it very well. It was 3.16 a.m. I woke up and I was in fear. I remember feeling this hole in the middle of my body. And I remember just praying like, God, take this away from me. Take this away from me. I couldn't even tell you what I was anxious about. There were so many things. There were layers. My family, my business, my marriage, my own faith. I did not know what course to take. I was desperate. I started just praying. I didn't know what else to do. But the next day, something amazing happened. I heard the voice of God for the very first time in my life, so clear that it gave me hope. God told me, Andres, when you seek me with all your soul, you will find me. This got me started into a whole new path. I started researching about like what is the soul and what is the spirit. And I ended up finding out that, you know, we are actually three bodies. We got the physical body, our soul body, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and our spiritual body, our light body. And all this got me starting a whole new path. I thought, I thought, man, like, I maybe not, I don't need to go to the world to learn all these different things, all this new age movement that I knew my spirit was not rejecting. I knew a lot of this stuff was not right. But I didn't know what to do. I was craving for more. I was tired of religion. I was tired of just like more of the tradition of the Christian culture that unfortunately we have cultivated in America and it's devastating. A lot of people think it's just about doing certain things and going to church but they do not live the true spirituality and I am here to tell you that it is possible. But first let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I went into a whole new path searching for these things, diving deeper into the Word of God. One of the first times I started doing it because I really was feeling called to it. That got me, that I started seeing that light at the end of the tunnel and, and everything started kind of shifting for me. But I did something radical because my anxiety was still there. I was still worried. I was still stressed. And so what I ended up doing is I ended up fasting. I ended up fasting for three days with just water. This is something I've never done. I actually didn't even want to fast, but I thought, man, I've tried everything. I might as well try this, and so I did. First day, it was a nightmare. I was even more attacked, and I was even more stressed, but God told me at the end of that second day, He said, Andres, will you do a second day for me? And I said, yes, Lord, yes. <laughs> Started feeling more strengthened with this. Day two, end of day two, He asked me once again, will you do a third day? And I said, Lord, you only know if I can resist this. And if I can endure this, if you are with me, I will. I will do a third day. And so at the end of the third day, something amazing happened. I was here, just literally, my balcony is right there. That's where I was praying. That's where I was starting to meditate and just to close my eyes and be with God three days into it. Just fasting, just seeking the face of God. Just seeking God, because that, that, that's what that voice told me. 
seek me with all your soul. And so I did. And so at the end of the day, of the, of the third day, I felt this heat right in the bottom of my spine, going all the way up. I felt this bubbling over here and I started bursting into speaking in tongues. <laughs> A lot of you just heard that and said, no way. Listen, I used to believe all those things weren't real like I was telling you. I used to believe they were maybe had a time. I was not searching for the gift of tongues. I was just searching for a deeper intimacy with the Creator. And I found it. He strengthened my soul. He gave me new life and started speaking in tongues. And I started now diving into this stuff that, man, this is real. I've been missing out so long on this because I never wanted to submit. I never wanted to obey God. I never wanted to give Him my all. And although that was a huge milestone, it wasn't over. For the next two weeks, I started praying and reading and studying and God just started teaching me more and more about what it is, all these tongues and things and faith. And I started reading passages like Jesus healing people and Peter healing people and all these different you know, characters of the Bible doing miraculous and supernatural things. And I thought, Lord, where are those things? And he said, I am the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Do you believe this? And I said, yes. And so he started challenging my faith and he started asking me to pray over certain things. He started asking me to reclaim my authority. And so for the next few months after that, I went on a whole new journey of discovering the power of the Spirit, the authority that Christ had given us, the keys of the kingdom, as well as other amazing tools like awareness and focus and your breath and perception and energy and demons and angels and all these different things that form part of the spiritual realm that we do not see but yet exist simultaneously at all times throughout all our existence. So let me ask you, do you believe that you can receive that power and authority? Do you believe there's a new level of faith that you need to cross over? The word says that we move from faith to faith. We move from revelation to revelation, from glory to glory. How is this possible if we're capping ourselves? You see, God is dying, longing to be with us, to be close to us, to be restore that relationship just like it was at the beginning before sin entered the world where man walked with God and God walked with man. And so I invite you now to explore this new path of the true spirituality in Jesus Christ because He is the light. He is the Good Shepherd. He is the author and the perfecter of your faith and my faith. <laughs> and this is just the beginning because what started happening after was insane. I actually started going out there in the street. I started praying for people randomly in the street. And some of them got healed on the spot. I did not believe in all of this stuff, but it's real. Miracles are real. Healings are real. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are 1000% real. The question is, do you believe this? Because unbelief is the antithesis of faith. It's the kryptonite of faith. You see, faith is so much more than just believing in it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The substance, it says in the King James Version. When you're able to grow your faith by hearing the Word of God and you become light, and you become one with the Spirit. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He has given us His Spirit so that we can become one with the Father as well. This is a long journey. As a matter of fact, we have to go through three dark nights. The dark night of the wilderness, which submits our flesh. The dark night of the soul, which submits our mind, our will, and our emotions. Not my will be done, but your will be done, Jesus prayed. And lastly, the dark night of the Spirit. I invite you to come take this new journey with me because I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you things that I've stumbled upon by the grace of God. I'm going to show you some of the things that He has taught me and some of the other mentors I started seeking. I, I went out there 
all my day consisted was on diving deep into this stuff. As a matter of fact, my business started growing too after my faith grew. My relationship with my wife got completely healed and we started growing together as a couple. It was so amazing, so rewarding. We started making more money. We started getting time back. We stopped worrying. This is real. Jesus said in John 10 that he came so that we might live a life abundantly. He has made every provision for us. He has seated us already with Christ in heavenly places. Now it's your time. It's your time to take a new step in your faith. It's your time to wake up and realize that the promises of God are there for you to take. You see, I was not like this. I did not speak like this, I did not believe these things, but things have happened, as I've shared with you, that have completely shifted my perspective on what true spirituality is, or what the real essence of the Christian life is. You see, it's sad, most people that go to church do not have a clue even of the things that I speak about. <laughs> Again, I didn't know either. These are not things that I found at church, unfortunately. Some people, some churches, I'm sure they teach them, but they're few and far between. Because we've gone caught up in religiousness, opinion, debate, tradition. These things are killer of the spirit. They choke the spirit. I invite you to take action on this membership because you're about to transform your life from the inside out. You're about to realize how we do not wage war according to the flesh. He has given us tools and weapons that are mighty in power for the pulling down of strongholds, for the casting down of arguments. And we have authority and power over all sickness and over all devils. <laughs> now, God has called me to go into ministry and start teaching people what really is the true spirituality? What really is to connect with the Spirit? What really is to be one with the Father? To abide in Him and Him in you? You see, this goes so much deeper than sometimes just believing it's a nice idea. You see, a lot of the things in Scripture are so deep that it requires childlike faith to see it because God <laughs> confuses the wisdom of the wise and God uses the weak to shame the strong. There's a lot of things that I will be teaching you that do not make sense with that traditional view. But once you dive deeper into the scripture, you will see, you will see for yourself that the true spirituality that Jesus lived, it's so much deeper. No wonder, no wonder why healings happen. No wonder why they could go out there and open the eyes of the blind. No wonder how even Peter walked on water. I believe that if you and I had faith, you could walk on water. Now, this is not an easy fit. This is not something that happens overnight. You see, faith is active. Faith requires for you to move in faith, in trusting, in action. And this is what grows your faith. You see, God said, Jesus said in his word that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will tell to that mountain to move and it will obey you. Now, faith, it's dense. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We're gonna dive deeper into studying what faith is, what spiritual warfare is, how you can put on the armor of light, how you can shine your light, the light that Jesus has put in you because remember, you have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. Do you believe that? I am now on a mission to save a billion souls because God goes before me. <laughs> it's so funny because I'll tell you this last thing just to give you courage and give you hope because I did not want to be in ministry. My dad was a pastor. I, I thought I was just gonna be some sort of, you know, businessman or some sort of, uh, you know, career professional of some sorts, but I did not want to go to ministry. I did not want to 
be out there preaching and all these different things, but when you experience the true spirituality, the true power of God, and you receive the keys of the kingdom, and not just receive them, but you start exercising your power, you start exercising your authority, you will see that even when you walk in a room, the atmosphere changes. Things like manifestation, law of attraction, all that is just 0.11%, like it's so tiny compared to what it truly is. And I'll be honest, we're just getting started. I'm just scratching the surface because I do not claim to have all the answers. I have just started in this journey, but it's so amazing that, we'll, that it will allow you to go to a new level. It will allow you to increase your spirit's capacity. And in the way, you'll destroy anxiety, you'll destroy fear, you'll gain more confidence. Mark my words, because the power and authority that Jesus Christ gives us goes far beyond anything that the world can ever offer to you. Stop seeking in the world. Stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to live a religious life. Understand that Jesus Christ lives in you. His Spirit lives in you. And He has given you as well spiritual gifts that you must develop to go to that next level. He also has given you a calling, a purpose. And we're gonna dive into all these things inside of Christ Light. I'm so happy to have the opportunity, the honor of guiding you through this journey as you experience more peace, a deeper faith, a closer connection with God and the Holy Spirit, a stillness of mind and heart and will. Because the Bible says in Psalm 23 that He leads us by still waters. He restores our soul. Father, I just want to pray right now for anyone that will be entering this membership. I pray that they only take action if they're ready to move to a closer and deeper relationship with You. I pray that they don't do this because they just want to explore it and just you know, learn some cool techniques and tactics on how to see in the spirit, or how to have visions and dreams. So Father, this is not about the gifts. This is about you, the creator. It's about Jesus, the author and perfecter of her faith. I pray that you mold and touch every single heart and every single soul of everyone that will be walking in, reading this page, looking at this stuff, and that if they do take action, that they do it in faith, that they don't doubt and they understand that it's time for them to step up to a new challenge, step up to a new identity, step up to a new level of revelation. Thank you, Jesus, that you have put everything we need in your word and you are absolute. You are all we need. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and we ask that he remains in this place, that he remains in the lives of everyone that will be listening and is listening to this. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Take care, guys. I will see you inside. The membership, by the way, will be going up. <laughs> the more people we get, the more things we need to put in place, the more people we need to hire to make everything smooth, the membership will be going up. So I ask you, jump in now. You'll be grandfathered at that price. Get lifetime membership. I really recommend that. Otherwise, you'll probably later regret not having just got the whole thing like for lifetime. I really recommend you do this. I'm going to be sending you this shirt too, the official shirt. If you do take action on that, I love action takers. I love people that don't doubt, that don't let unbelief creep, and they just move in power and faith. That's the first step. And I love to reward and encourage that. So I will see you inside and take action. Take care, my friend.